Welcome to Conversations with Postpartner, where we explore aspects of running a successful wedding photography business through conversations with real wedding photographers around the world. On this episode, I talk to Melbourne-based wedding photographer Michael Briggs, or to those who know him simply, Briggsy. Michael's relaxed attitude towards shooting upwards of 80 weddings in a single season had me so curious to how he manages to keep his sanity and have any free time at all. Luckily for everybody listening, he explains his approach to running a wedding photography business with extreme levels of efficiency and touches on the importance of having a strong community to lean on. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoy my conversation with Michael Briggs. All right, Michael, thank you so much for joining us. Um, For those of you who don't know, Michael is a wedding photographer based out of Yarra Valley, which is just outside of Melbourne, Australia, in the province of Victoria. Um, Yeah, thank you so much for joining us. How's your day going so far? Thanks, man. It's going well. Thanks so much for having me. I, uh, I I really appreciate it. Yeah, I like that you use the word province. Province. We call them. We, yeah, we yeah. Call, we just call them states. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But we. I don't know. We. I just assume Commonwealth. You know, we have provinces. So yeah, I just yeah. It to you. But, yeah. but you had it spot on. You had all the other all the other information was uh, exactly correct. Well, yeah. Well played. I, well I always I always struggle with saying Melbourne Melbourne Melbourne. I can never decide. Yeah. Well, how just, do you say it? But, Pretend, yeah, it's spelled Melbourne, like O-U-R-N-E, yeah, yeah. but just pretend like there's no O-U-R and it's just like E-N, like Melbourne. Melbourne. We just say Melbourne. Melbourne. Yeah. Oh, that, Melbourne. like me saying that though makes me sound like I'm trying to have a, an Australian accent. Yeah. <laughs> Melbourne. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Melbourne. Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to struggle with that one for a long time, so. <laughs> no, that's all right. Most people do. It's all yeah. good. All that's, good. Let's dive into like who you are and. Um, Sounds good, man. Yeah. Why don't you explain uh, to us like who you are, um, what your photography is all about. And, uh, we'll, we'll kind of like parse it out and expand on like how you got into it. Um, but yeah, why don't you just explain to everyone who you are, like what you're all about and why people love you so much. (laughs) Oh, put you on the spot there. (laughs) Yeah. At least, least I I, I, I paid for all those Google reviews. Um, (laughs) yeah, yeah, they just, they just made some mine. I was like, man, I reckon, I reckon you should write this. Yeah. Um, Here's 50 bucks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, spot on. Um, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm Michael. Most people call me Briggsy. Um, I kind of just became a thing. Um, I, mean, I mean, all my friends, like most of my life, have called me Briggsy. But I think the more and more weddings I've shot, kind of people at venues and other other suppliers and everyone just kind of just started calling me that. And you know, a couple of a couple of years ago, I just changed my branding just to say Briggsy. It was like nice. Yeah. At the time, I thought it was like a ballsy move. I was like, I was like, oh man, who's just gonna book this guy, um, Briggsy? But it, yeah, it yeah. seems to have worked really well. Um, yeah, I've been shooting weddings full-time for five years now, a bit over five years. I, yeah, I quit my day job in, in January 2015. Um, yeah, and I've been doing it full-time um, since then, yeah. I, I live about 40, 50 kilometres from the from the CBD in Melbourne. And, and like, I live in the outer suburbs, but it's close to an area called the Yarra Valley, which is which is one of Australia's biggest wine regions. Mm-hmm. Um, so naturally there's a lot, of, a lot of wineries and farms and venues and that's where I'm kind of shooting, you know, 70, 80% of my work. Um, yeah. at the moment, at the moment there, which, yeah, which keep, keeps me happy and keeps me, uh, keeps me pretty busy as well. Yeah. And so what was that like? Um, so I know we've had conversations in the past where talking about your trans- transition from your previous job and becoming a full-time wedding photographer. Um, what were you doing before photography? Uh, I've, I've done lots of different jobs in my life. Uh, I, I, I just had an office job, um, the everyman. working, yeah, working prior to this, but yeah, like many years ago, um, I worked, I worked, um, I worked as a carpenter on on um, on, on a building site. Yeah, my, my my dad's a builder, so I worked with him for a few years. Um, I've done that, but most of the time, I've kind of just done, you know, just different kind of office jobs. Um, yeah, I actually worked in an SEO company, um, which is the very last job um, that I had. I was there for nice. a couple of years, so so that kind of transition kind of helped me um, over a little bit. Um, but yeah, I kind of just started shooting weddings for a bit of fun. Um, in about 2011 and just slowly built up my business um, yeah. then. By slowly, it actually happened pretty quickly. Um, but yeah, I haven't, um, you know, I, I guess over like four years, yeah, from 2011 to 2015 um, when I was able to do it just uh, full time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So one, one of the things that um, stands out to me when talking about you or talking to you or thinking about you um, is just the uh, the sheer volume of weddings that you take on in a season. Um and you kind of like shrug it off like it's just like another another year, another season. But I think a lot of people hearing these numbers um, are just like baffled. 
like mind blown. Like, how do you do it? So like, how many yeah, weddings yeah. are you shooting per year? <laughs> Why don't you tell, tell the people? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's something I've learned. I, I, I was like, I was surprised that my volume surprised people initially because I was just like, it was just like something I did. Yeah. Um, on average, I'm shooting about kind of between seventy and eighty weddings a, a, a year, a calendar year, a wedding season, what do you want to call it? But yeah, yeah. between January and December. Um, yeah. Ever since 2015, since doing it, so 2015 was not quite that number. It was about 50 weddings in 2015. But um, yeah, yeah super, since super 2016 late. onwards, um, yeah, I've, I've been doing about yeah 70, 80 weddings per yeah per per calendar year. Yeah, um, and that's weddings. That's not like elopements. That's not uh, small days. That's full weddings. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah, that's weddings. Yeah, there's a, there's a few elopements in there, but um, I don't do like yeah, I might do like th- three elopements or something a year. Yeah. Um, but like that's still like a full day's work. You know, you got to hang out with a couple and um and do that. But yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's never really bothered me. I just I just I just do it. I mean, I've like <laughs> this this is the easiest job in the world. I I, I love it. Um, uh, like I've worked so much harder jobs than than like just rocking up to a wedding and hanging out with people and partying and and taking <laughs> photos of them. It's a, it's, a, it's a pretty it's a pretty sweet gig, man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and I mean that, that's like the part of it. I, you know, I, I like doing it, so I do do it. It doesn't it doesn't bother me. Like I can I can physically do it. I, I, I can shoot three weddings in a row, and I'm not like physically exhausted. Mentally, you might be a little bit drained, but mm-hmm. um, yeah, I can physically do it. I can mentally do it. So I'm like, it would be daft of me not to do it. And yeah. it's only since kind of becoming a part of um, more more different photography communities over the year and talking to others, I've only ever met like a few other people who are kind of shooting that volume, and you mm-hmm. know. Other people who are, you know, classified as quite busy photographers are kind of maxing out at 30, 40 weddings a year. Yeah. Um, and then like, man, you're doing doing 70 or 80. Um, I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it's fine. Um, yeah, it, it's all good. There could be a lot harder things than shooting 80 weddings a year. There's a lot, there's a lot of people out there who work <laughs> a lot harder than doing, than doing that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're going to have a lot of angry photographers being like <laughs> you don't understand <laughs> oh, am, I, am, I, am i gonna annoy people by saying that yeah maybe, maybe. A little I'm, bit. I'm, I'm sure if they're gonna so like have, they're gonna hate like it you know when like they want they like it but they hate it because you, you're doing it and they're not doing it you know yeah yeah for sure i mean yeah i can i can i can see that as well but yeah yeah so did you have like a like a framework for how much weddings a wedding photographer was supposed to shoot i mean it kind of sounds like you didn't get, getting into it no, okay. not really. I, I never really um I feel like I was a bit of a lone wolf until until twenty fifteen. Um when I when I quit my day job and went full time. That was like my first like realization that I was like, all right, maybe I need to like network with some other wedding photographers and, and mm-hmm. chat with people more. I had a few people in weddings that I spoke to, like other photographers, but they were pretty different style to me, um, and just kind of like in a whole different kind of scene to maybe, you know, what I was, you know, what I was shooting um as well so yeah i think in 2014 which i was still working a full-time job um i was i was commuting to the city on um in the train and working a full-time job and i shot about 25 30 weddings that year um and this is obviously where um the the point where outsourcing my editing comes into it as well Mm -hmm. that year i started outsourcing my editing basically just out of necessity because like i was gonna trying to work full time and do 25 30 weddings i was gonna give myself a a bloody nervous breakdown yeah um so yeah i started outsourcing then and then when i went full time in 2015 i was like sweet i'm gonna have all this time on my hands i'm gonna do my own editing again um and then i just never did um i just (laughs) i just kept outsourcing it and that's what like you know would mean to you know, g- grow the amount of weddings I was shooting and grow my my business quite quite rapidly, like from from that point. Um, mm-hmm. But by doing that, did that answer the question? I don't know. Sorry, I, I ramble a bit. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. I mean, uh, even if you didn't answer the question, it, it was great information. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, good man, thank you. Yeah. Well, one thing that um like I've really noticed about your business specifically is that you kind of like you mentioned, you're kind of a lone wolf in how you do things, like. I know a lot of photographers will look to like who's doing this thing well and then try to emulate that or try to like yeah. copy that. Um, I don't see that at all with you. Um, even like social media, you're not like a massive influencer on social media. Your website is like straight and to the point. Like it's not like yeah. other websites. Like what, like how, how did you get to where you are? Like 80 weddings a year. Like what, what do you attribute that to? Cause it seems like it's backwards to everyone else <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah for sure yeah i mean compared to some you know photographers who you know 
travel the world, um, shooting weddings and all this kind of stuff. Like, and you know, with tens of thousands of Instagram followers. Yeah, I mean, it, like, it, like you know, to date, I, I, I don't even know the exact. I might have like six thousand Instagram followers or something like that. It's mm-hmm. not even like a, it's not a big number. Like in the grand, in the grand scheme of things, um, the. The volume has is, is definitely just come from from word of mouth. Like that that is like by far and above is is like where like a huge amount um, of, of my weddings uh, are coming from is it, it, is word of mouth. Obviously, like social media and, and 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 Google and a few directories and stuff like that can help. But but word of mouth is definitely um, definitely the biggest one. It's more. Um, I feel like it's just like making an impression on the day with the couple and with mm-hmm. their guests. Um, and and just kind of being that person that that everyone wants to be around, and people want to like have you at their wedding um, yeah. as well. And 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 just having like the the couples like your couples that you photograph, they're going to become your biggest cheerleaders and your biggest advertisers. There's no like if you there's no point spending thousands of dollars on on on, on directories and advertising and stuff if your couples aren't already like just massive fans of yours and mm-hmm. cheerleaders. And that's just creating like an awesome experience. Before the day, especially on the day, um, like that's like the biggest part is, is is on the day, and then obviously a great experience after that as well. But mm-hmm. yeah, but the on the day on the day experience is everything. I feel like, I mean, it's never happened. But even if someone like got their wedding photos from me, and this kind of goes for anyone as well. Like if someone got their wedding photos and they were disappointed at them for whatever reason, at least you would know on the day. Like if you've worked your ass off and you've gave them a great experience on the day and you've had fun. No one is ever going to, like, forget that. They're never going to be like, oh, I don't love my photos, but, like, shit, that guy gave it a red-hot crack on the day. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, yeah. man, man, he worked hard on the day and, and mm-hmm. put in so much effort. Um, so I, f- I feel like the, the, way that, the way that you treat people and the way that people remember how they felt on their wedding day, like, as far, like, supersedes, like, the photos that they get. Mm-hmm. Um, the photos they get is just an added bonus, and 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 then like remembering how they felt, you know, and, and how the photographer made them feel when they were in that moment. Um, I think it, I think is important, and then, then those kind of those people become your cheerleaders. They leave you great reviews, and you know, you have this. You, you kind of got this window of you know an age. You know, most people get married at kind of between the age of the twenty five and thirty five. Um, so I know at that wedding, when I'm at that wedding, if there's a hundred guests there. There is at least one other couple at that wedding mm-hmm. who are planning their own wedding as well. Um, and it's a matter of being able to like market yourselves to them. And this is not like I, I don't. I've never even printed business cards in my life. This is not like walking around <laughs> with business cards and like looking for the chick with a ring on her finger and going, "Hey, yeah, yeah. Are you engaged? When's your wedding coming <laughs> up?" It's just it's just knowing, but just by making that impression on people and just um, creating an awesome experience that they're, they're going to find your work. Um, yeah, and there's a, I can kind of um, I can expand on that more as well. As in like after every wedding, like the same night. Um, I always send sneak peeks to the couple the same yeah. night. Um, mm-hmm. Very occasionally it's the next morning, like if we've got to drive a long way home or something like that. Yeah. But usually always like I'll often – I'll be texting couples at 1 o'clock, two, 2 o'clock in the morning after I've backed up my photos and done the sneak peeks. Like that is like so powerful because then when they wake up in the morning, they might get them that night if they're still awake and partying or mm-hmm. um, doing you know what. Um, but then when they, they, when they wake in the morning, they check their phones – and they've got like four or five photos from their wedding, from their photographer. They're like, shit, I wasn't expecting that. And then like, you know, naturally they're pumped. So they're going to update like, they're going to update their Facebook picture page like yeah. straight away, their profile mm-hmm. picture. And it's going to be like a professional wedding photo, not like a shitty iPhone photo from someone. Mm-hmm. And then like all the guests see that, but their last memory of the photographer, they're like, shit, last time I saw that guy, I was like, he was dancing to some Bruno Mars song <laughs> on the dance floor. And now, and, and, and now the couple have got their wedding photos already. Like they don't yeah, have yeah. their wedding photos. They've got like four, but, yeah. but the people don't know that. And therefore yeah. like the perception the person I was talking about, like that couple who's engaged, like they've already gone, well, I remember that guy. And now I've seen the photos like, you know, and this, this is all happening on Sunday morning. And then on Sunday night, that's like, you get like, you might get a couple of inquiries coming through like, Hey, mm. I met you last night at the wedding. I met you last week at the wedding. And, yeah, and that's where it kind of just um, snow, snowballs from from there. Wow, was that, was that like the, the longest answer in the world? But yeah, yeah. no, that was, you answered it perfectly. <laughs> I, like, I, I'll get. I want to get to kind of like your client experience a bit more um, in a bit, but I kind of want you to just keep going on like your day of. Um, I guess like it's not a strategy because it's kind of just seems like it's who you are. Like you're just there to have a good time, give your clients a good experience. Um, and do you do you shoot with a second shooter or, or is it all all you? Very, very rarely I shoot with a second shooter. Yeah. Yeah. 
two common reasons um, I have a second shooter. One is if there's a huge amount of guests, it's like north, if, if I tell people like north of 150 guests, I make mm. them like pay for a second shooter and I'll, I'll bring someone along. Mm. Um, or if like logistically like I can't cover groom prep and bride prep or something like that, I, I make, again, I make them pay and have a second shooter. Yeah. Um, or like, oh, there was a really strange time last year. Like I completely ruined my ankle um, and oh, I couldn't yeah. shoot a bunch of weddings, yeah. but then I just... Um, I I'd still ended up going to the weddings on crutches anyway. Um, so the second shooter was kind of like a first shooter and I kind of like went around on, 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 on crutches. And yeah, I, I didn't go to all of them. I went, I went, to, I went to most of them when it, was yeah. like, when it was a nice sunny day. I wasn't going to like w- go around a winery on a rainy day in crutches. I'd just make it worse. Yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah, most of the time it's just me. But also, you know, I think the amount of videographers couple have, couples have is like increased exponentially over the last year or two. I would say... Back in 2015, 2016, I reckon 20%, 30% of the weddings that I would shoot, there'd be a video guy there. Mm-hmm. And I reckon now, like the last six months, I would say 80% of the weddings I've shot, there's a video guy there. Mm-hmm. Um, and so for that reason, I tend to – if people are talking about a second shooter or some photographers really spruik having a second shooter, um, mm-hmm. if the couples are talking about it, I usually try and talk them out of having a second shooter because there'll be a video guy there. I just feel like – and often video guys work with two of them, which I completely get why that is because they've got to do audio and shit like that. It's a lot more stressful. But, um, yeah. yeah, I just feel like the, the more cameras you add, the more it starts feeling like a production and like less like a party. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, definitely. That's, um, that's wild. Just me. Just you for yeah, 70, just 80 me. weddings. <laughs> no biggie. <laughs> so yeah. it seems like you're, you're quite intentional on your day of to make that impression on your couple and even their guests. Um, yep. Do you like – is that just you, like who you are? Or is that something that you are thinking about going into the wedding day? Um, being like, I need to make this impression on them and impression on their guests. Like what's your I, thought process behind that? Yeah, I, I love if, that question. It's awesome. Because people people ask me that um, a lot. Like, like naturally, yeah, like I am, I am an extroverted person. Like I'm not a shy person. Mm-hmm. But I feel like at weddings as well, they're probably like – it's it's not a false front that I'm putting on. Like it's not like it's not I'm not becoming something else. Like it's still me, but I think it's just like a heightened version of myself mm. and like a like a more like pumped up um, version of myself. I, I guess is is the best way of um, putting that because it's also you know because you hear story you know like when you're around you know that, that many weddings a year you know you're talking to bridal parties and people at weddings and everyone has a story about they were at a wedding. And the photographer was just an asshole, or they're a jerk, and they didn't want to be there, or the photographer was so bossy all day. Yeah. And I was like, you know, and everyone has that story, and they just had a shitty experience with the photographer. So straight away, I feel like, especially when people have been in a lot of bridal parties, they're already expecting the photographer to be a bit of a dickhead. Like they're, they're already <laughs> like not liking you, it's, it's yeah. particularly the you know the couples you know in their like mid thirties and late thirties who've been to a lot of weddings. They're already yeah. like, oh, here's the photographer. So I'm like. So if I can do two things, if I can like one, take in focus photos and two, not be a dickhead, then <laughs> I can like continue shooting this and, and pay my mortgage, yeah. um, shoot, shooting weddings and pay my mortgage shooting weddings for a living. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so, so definitely like, I, like – but I, I, I'm legitimately excited when I, when I get to weddings. Like I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm pumped um, and it's kind of – and I want people to know that and I want people to feed – um off off that energy um that i that i, that I bring as well I, absolutely yeah and i don't want to downplay like to our listeners that um you're just this like party guy who like photography is secondary like your images are very beautiful and very good uh so i wanted to just say that like oh, your, thank photo- you. your, I, I, your photography speaks for itself and it, it's definitely like an expression of your energy i guess would be a great way to say it like you can definitely feel it and see it in the, the images. Yeah, so. definitely. And yeah, and, and that's I, I guess that's something that I've become more aware of and something that I really want to show um in my work as well is like mm-hmm. that that brightness and that happiness and that energy. Like I'm not like if someone's looking for that dark, moody photographer who's kind of gonna sit in the corner and not, you know, um be interacting with guests. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but like there is a massive market for dark and moody photography. There's a market for like way more candid photography than me as well. Yeah. Um like there's a, there's a mark of everything, but I'm like I make it apparent like I'm not going to be like a sit in the corner quietly kind of photographer. Um, you know I want my images to be, um, you know, to, to show that I was like part of the day. You know I'll often like somehow like put myself in photos. I have this thing like <laughs> at every wedding I try and like I want to like put myself like in 
in one photo, whether it's just yeah. like a reflection or whether that's like me like leaning out and you know like <laughs> cheersing in a photo or grabbing someone's arm on the dance floor or yeah, yeah I want to I want to be able to do that um, in in my images. Yeah, so yeah, I probably didn't yeah I didn't explain that very well. Yeah, but um, yeah. Yeah, there's a market for every kind of photography and there's no right or wrong to how people shoot. There's people shooting, you know, really, really highly posed and highly artistic with lots mm. of flashes and stuff like that. Like that's not me. I, I don't know how to do that. I'm, I'm terrible at using my flash. <laughs> um, yeah, and there's a market for dark moody photography. There's a market for just really traditional photography and mm. yeah, like every couple will kind of find the um, photography that suits, suits them. But yeah, I want my photography to be like a reflection of me. So like that's just yeah. like you know, like bright and happy and fun and, and loud and I want people to kind of see that um, when they look at my photos. Yeah. And it's funny when people say that because <laughs> so, sometimes I do, you know, like act like a bit of a crazy man on wedding days and I love it when people use the word actually. Like if you show, you know, you show like a bridesmaid, you know, the photo um, on the back of your camera and she's like, oh, that's actually really good. They're like, they're, they're like, they're like surprised. <laughs> what were you expecting? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I, I always find that word actually funny as in they were just expecting to, yeah, I don't know what they are expecting. But, yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. So like... In terms of like shooting style, I don't want to spend too much time on shooting style because I feel like people can just take a look at your website, Instagram, and then your work kind of just speaks for itself. But um, where like, did you have any like photographers that you were drawing inspiration from for shooting style, or were you just like connecting with the the couples, the clients, and being like, yeah, this is who I am. These are the pictures I'm going to take because this is who I am. Um, was there any yeah, thought a process bit. that? Yeah, I mean, I never um, like I I, I never um, I'm gonna try. I was never like heavily like involved in like the whole wedding wedding side of the industry. Like it wasn't even until like I had one of my weddings published in a magazine recently. I'd never even read a wedding magazine um, <laughs> pr prior to that. I'm not saying like I've, I've never been like completely isolated from the wedding industry. I'm just this, you know, just this guy. It's like I don't know anything about weddings. Like of course I speak to other photographers and there's other photographers I look up to and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But definitely in those first couple of years I kind of just did my thing. Like going into that first wedding I shot, like I'd never second shot another wedding for anyone and I never kind of – I didn't like look up on, you know – whatever the big platform was back then, Flickr or something. I never like looked back on Flickr. <laughs> Flickr. Flickr. <laughs> yeah, do you remember that? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. My, my, uncle, my uncle still uses it all the time. So. Oh, does he really? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can probably um, – if you look up my name or like Michael Briggs Photography and Flickr, you can – you can probably find some pretty like awesome like selective colour shit from back in, yeah, back in back circa was, 2011. Yeah, and yeah. It's a good yeah, stuff. You can, you can see where that started. It was, uh, it was good. Um, <laughs> but um, – yeah, yeah, I, know, I never followed it really closely. I kind of just always like kind of just did my own thing and just kind of wanted to shoot, you know, like what how I felt. But yeah, but you know, since since going full time and, and networking a lot um, in photography groups and stuff like that, like there's absolutely um, photographers whose work that I love and look up to. And, and some of those photographers are like quite a different style um, mm. to me, you know, like as far as like, you know, Australian names go, you know, there's like a photographer called Dan O'Day, like everyone in Australia knows this photographer. Another guy yeah. called Ollie Sansom, like these guys are super like, highly creative like like way more creative and, and talented than, than i'll ever be and then and, and and yeah their work has a completely different look to my work but i like look at that and i feel like i look at it because i look at it and i'm like i don't know how they shot that like i have no idea you know what i mean like a photographer like me it's just like oh that's a you know that's a couple in a field at sunset like that's you know that's pretty thing like I, I would if someone else has shot that i'm like i know how they shot that like that's <laughs> yeah. done but you know I, I i love looking at a photographer's work um, or you know, or, or or other photographers, you know, like there's an, another guy here called Jerome Cole, like, and he's just amazing at using off camera flash mm. um, and and doing night photos. And, and I just I look at his work and I'm mind blown because I'm like I I don't know how he did it. I have no idea how he's taken that photo. And I'm mm. yeah, I was like maybe maybe I'll get to that point, but yeah, <laughs> whatever but yeah, you're doing I think seems I, to be working. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, thank you. <laughs> um, and then sorry, kind of like shift gears a little bit. Um, no, do it. You recently switched your like camera systems over to Sony, yeah. Which like in my opinion, because uh, I'm like editing different photographers all the time, so I see all of these different camera systems come through. Um, I feel like that's such a Michael thing to do. Like it matches your personality. It's just like quicker autofocus, smaller, easier to lug around. What, what was like your thought process behind switching to Sony, and how's that been? Oh, um, yeah. Um, because you did it pretty early too. You did it like what two years ago now. One or two yeah. years. Yeah, October, October 2018, I changed to Sony. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it was actually the reason I bought one. I knew, I knew, 
a lot of the video guys were using Sony already. Um, that was like pretty common in the video industry. So, you know, you'd shoot alongside video guys and they'd have these tiny little cameras. I'm like, how are you creating like such amazing work with these little cameras? And um, yeah, it was actually, yeah, it was October 2018 because it was, it was when my daughter was born and I, I just I was never taking photos, like family photos, because I just couldn't be bothered getting an SLR out to take family photos. So you just mm-hmm. take all the photos like on an iPad. Um, hey, the sun just came out. Um, oh, it looks great. Yeah, <laughs> but completely irrelevant if someone's listening to this on a podcast. But um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Michael's face is now lit perfectly, and yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's also it's like an insight into how my brain works. I'm just like, just like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I have no like, like inner dialogue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, my daughter was born. So I was like, I'm going to buy a Sony camera um, to like motivate myself to take more family pictures because it's just smaller and more nimble. Um, and then I took it to one wedding. Um, you know, and like a lot of photographers, I use those hold fast straps. So like I had a Canon on one side and then a Sony on the other side at like mm. this one wedding and I hardly even shot on the Sony. It was like, it was such a whole new experience. And that wedding, yeah, it's had a Sony and one at the 35 mil lens and that was it. And then that wedding I shot, I shot like, Within five minutes, I was like, holy shit, like what the hell have I been using an SLR for so long for? Like within five, ten minutes, I pretty much shot the whole wedding on the Sony and the 35 wow. mil lens. I mm-hmm. hardly touch it. And then, yeah, that week, um, and I did it really quickly. Within like a week or two, I, I sold um, I sold all my Canon stuff on eBay and completely changed um, over, over to Sony. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I remember um, that transition being so quick. It was awesome. Yeah. One day. Yeah, it was super Ooh, quick. I'm yeah. all Sony. <laughs> Yeah, have, have you have you changed have you changed to mirrorless or are you still using SLRs? I'm still using SLR. I'm still using SLRs. Like that. Yeah, yeah. 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 no, I, I'm I'm not like but you know now everyone like always makes a joke about you know there's so many memes online in photography groups and stuff about Sony users be like this you know and you know <laughs> they don't shut up about Sony, um, but yeah, it's, it's just the, the important part to acknowledge is that like you could probably look through my Instagram. I mean, now you know the date that I changed. Someone might notice if you know what you're looking for. Yeah. But most people, there's no difference in the actual end product of the photos. That's really important to acknowledge. Like if you're using similar presets and you shoot in a similar style, mm. you, your photo, the end product of your photos are pretty similar. But it's the process of getting said end product has been made significantly easier by yeah. changing to Sony. Um, there's, yeah, there's just a, a few really easy things about it. It's just made life so much easier to be able to shoot quickly. And, um, yeah, my percentage of like usable photos has gone up like significantly, um, since, oh. since changing as well. Is but that just like better focus? better? Yeah. ISO? Yeah. The focusing system. Yeah. The focus. Yeah. The, the whole focusing system in general, in particular, having the eye focus, um, on Sony, like if you're a portrait photographer or a wedding photographer, that's just mind blowing. Um, and having the electronic viewfinder, like having an EVF, so knowing what your photo is already going to look like before you've taken it, like they're yeah. they're the two biggest reasons why, I'm like yeah, just to like summarize it that quick, they're like that's yeah. the biggest reason. So you're, you're not be. using the the viewfinder at all, you're using the electronic viewfinder on the back. Not on, not on the back, but um, like when you when you look through the you know when you hold the camera up to your face and look yeah. through it, that's still an electronic viewfinder. Yeah. Um, on a mirror on a mirrorless camera, so yeah, I'm, no, I'm not holding it in front of me and using the back <laughs> of my screen. I still I still hold it up. To oh, my you are eye. okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but that's still like it's but still electronic. But that's the exact image you're your gonna eye. get. It's not like a it's not a that, mirror image of like what your sensor might pick up. It's the exact image. That's the exact image. Yeah, that's right. Mm. So there's you do, you don't um you don't need to chimp anymore. Yeah, is that. Is that an Australian saying or a worldwide saying? Chimp. I, I've never once heard that before. So you know what it is? Be... So chimp is like <laughs> maybe it's Australian. I don't know. So when you like when you when you when you take the photo, yeah. Um, when you take a photo and check the back of your screen, you know what I mean. So take a photo, check the screen, take yeah. a photo, yeah, check yeah. the screen. You know, putting your camera up and down. That's referred to as chimping. Um, chimping. I don't know why. Okay. Yeah, chimping. Yeah. Okay. I'll yeah. Maybe, maybe it is Australian. Yeah. I've got no idea. <laughs> but yeah, with with a mirrorless camera, like I I, I don't you don't chimp anymore because there's no need to because you already know what the photo look like. You don't yeah. even have you don't even have the review thing on. So when you click your shutter, you yeah. don't want the image doesn't come up on the screen because you don't need to look at it because you've yeah. already seen it. Also, you just yeah. took like a thousand pictures in one second too, right? Because it's so fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is super fast. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I, I only turn it on that fast like for a couple of moments during the day, like like you know, like the confetti or the pedal toss, like after the ceremony. Yeah. Um, and like family portraits, just so I can I can smash them out as quickly as possible, and and you know have a usable shot without everyone um, with with everyone looking at the camera and not blinking and shit. Yeah, mm-hmm. but most of the day, like if you've got like the fast shutter on most of the day on a mirrorless, like. Man, shit! You end up with like fifteen thousand photos from a wedding day. So it's 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 too fast. Yeah, yeah. And you're you're running two. Like you got the whole fast with like one on each side, or are you just one? 
No, no, I shoot, yeah, I shoot with two cameras, yeah. Yeah, most of the day I shoot 35, 50 for most of the day. Yeah, yeah. which might seem strange to some people because they are actually quite similar in focal length but they're also, um, they're also quite different um, mm. as well. Um, yeah, I have other lenses that I change too, but yeah, they're all, they're all prime lenses um, that I use, yeah. It's the same as most prime shooters, you know, like um, yeah, yeah. 24, 35, 50, 85, 135. Mm. Yeah, a couple of them don't come out. Like 135 I don't use that often. Um, yeah. And I would, n- I never shoot the couple portraits on eighty five or one thirty five. Yeah. Um, which I see photographers. I have done it a couple of times, usually just by accident. Like we've gone out for sunset photos, and I was already shooting reception, and I had like a one thirty five or eighty five on, and I forgot to change, and I've got out, and yeah, I sometimes kind of like that because like shit, like makes you think differently. But um, I find like <laughs> I find eighty five um. 85 or longer, like when shooting couple portraits, it's a pretty kind of I, – I personally find it an awkward length to shoot from, mm. um, to shoot couple portraits. I kind of – I really like being in people's grill um, <laughs> when, it, when, when, when I shoot, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel like you would be <laughs> – just the, the vibe I get for sure. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Um, I kind of want to get away from like shooting on the wedding day uh, and talk more a bit about like your process of like booking clients because I think for a lot of people – they are currently struggling with booking like 20 to 30 to 40 weddings a year with like everything that comes up before the day with all like the communication meetings they're doing like engagement photos like all the following yep. up um and i think uh it's not to be like understated that you're doing that with 70 to 80 people per season um what does that look like and i i can't imagine that you're doing it like anyone else because nothing else you do is like anybody else so <laughs> what you kind of like yeah, what, what is your, like, contact? Do you have a contact form? Like, what's that, like, workflow look like for you? Yeah. And this could – I've probably already given really long answers, but it could it could go long. Um, I, I want my process to be, like, as automated as, as possible. Um, yeah, so I feel like my like – my, I feel like, like, from the first touch point that a couple makes contact with me, yeah, like, my contact form, everything becomes pretty automated um, from – that point i'm still personally the one answering the emails like every inquiry i get i'm still personally answering that email obviously you cut mm-hmm. and paste certain parts of the um of, of the email like everyone does that there's no there's no like there's no big secret to that but um yeah yeah that, that, that that's pretty automated but my website my price guide and to a certain extent, my social media as well, but I can I can go into the social media side of it as well. But my website and price guide, and even my um, contact form, all of it is pushing couples towards not meeting to meet, not needing to meet me, face to face or or in person. That's like that's a huge part of being able to get through um, a big volume as well. And I'm not saying like I don't give a shit about my clients. Like if they want to meet me, like I'll meet them. Like absolutely, I'll, I'll grab a coffee or beer with someone at any mm. time. Yeah. That was prior to all the bars and cafes closing. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, we'll be doing it now online like yeah. that. But, um, yeah, I, I will go out and meet couples all the time. But I, I probably only meet about 50% of my couples now. Um, that's been particular in, like, the last 12, 18 months. I'll only meet about half the couples. Yeah, the other half of couples will just um, book me um, online. So you can, like, send them a, a form. And, yeah, they might ask a couple of questions or you might have a quick phone chat. But most of them, um, after sending out the price guide, will just, will, um, will just book online. Um, and a lot of them you don't really hear anything from until a couple of weeks before their wedding. So, yeah, about 50% yeah. of my clients, I meet them for the first time on their wedding day. It's actually a little bit over 50. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. and, and a lot of, you know, some people might hear that and they're like, oh, shit, what? Man, that's crazy. What if, what if they're a bridezilla? What if, you know? That? And I'm just I, – I, I like meeting people for the first time on their wedding day. Um, and I also feel like what, there's a few reasons for doing that. Obviously, meeting people and, and, and stuff is – takes up a lot of time prior to the wedding but the biggest thing i've found over the years is that you don't know what someone's going to be like on their wedding day um mm-hmm. so and i'm not saying that in a negative way like you can meet a couple you know down at the local cafe in their jeans and a t-shirt and they can be super chill and you're like oh man they these guys are ready to party they're gonna be so chill on the wedding day yeah. and then on the wedding day you get there and like you know, the mother of the bride has been on edge all morning. So then the bride's on edge and they're high stressed. And you're like, I don't remember you guys being like this. Yeah. And then like the other thing, you can meet couples who are like super nervous, you know, because they're so overwhelmed by the whole wedding planning process. And you're like, oh man, what's this day going to be like? And then you get there and they're just, they're ready to party. They're like, let's yeah. do it. Um, so yeah, people change so much on their wedding day. So that's, that's the biggest thing. Um, yeah. Um, with, with not, not, yeah, not, 
need to kind of worry about um, meeting um, too too much. But yeah, and then but then my booking form is all online. Like I, I, I use this program called Zapier, um, which ties together all all my software that I use, um, mm. like Google Docs and my accounting software, um, and everything. So so when someone wants to book me after they've originally inquired that that's all automated as well. Like that just feeds into my system. It dates automatically in my calendar. Um, and that and having like a back-end process and back-end systems that's pretty automated and I don't really need to think about it then enables my brain um, to be able to be reserved for, you know, for creative stuff and, and, and to have that energy on a wedding day because I haven't spent all week all week dicking around with boring admin work because that's yeah. that's like already done and, and automated. That's like it's so important to get to get that stuff down pat too. Yeah. So what what does your calendar look like then? Is it just like packed? Because I, like, I was trying to do the math on how many weekends there are in a year and then how many weddings you're booking per year. Like you, and you guys take a few months off for the, for your winter or for your summer, yep. sorry, which is, um, is it winter or summer? Summer, right? You guys take off? Winter. Uh, we take winter off, yeah. Winter, it's flipped. Your winter yeah, is yeah. during our summer. Yeah, so for us percent. like June, June, July, August is, is really, really quiet. Um, mm. Yeah, particularly that, that's not relevant for all of Australia. Um, you know, some um, some parts of Australia have busier seasons, you know, because it's, cause it's too hot um, in the mm. summer. So they're, they're, they're still busy in winter, like in North Queensland and stuff like that. But um, yeah, for, for a lot of like, for, for Melbourne and Sydney, like our, our, winters, our winters get nowhere near as cold as, like obviously it does for you guys, but um. <laughs> And winters still get cold and people are still pretty apprehensive to have um, weddings in winter um, at the moment. So naturally it's pretty quiet. You know, you can pick up a little bit of work throughout winter, but it, it's pretty quiet. So, yeah, um, yeah, majority of that work, like that 70, 80 weddings is stuffed into like… You like know, eight months of the year, essentially. That's exactly what I was going to say. About eight months of the year, that's, that's yeah. put into like eight months of the year. There's three or four months where you don't really do, you know, you don't have a heap of work on. That's when you can work on yes. your business. So you're averaging like seven to eight weddings per month. Which um, is, yeah, is yeah, yeah probably. It? Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, I think like you know, yeah, March, yeah, March I had like uh, like eleven or twelve, um, or something like that. Yeah, March and November are the two Jeez. really busy months. Um, but yeah, yeah, those months are busy, and then other you know, Jan- January, December, because yeah, it's Christmas and holidays, that's not as busy. But mm-hmm. yeah, th- that is definitely stuffed into a really small period of time. Um, a- a- absolutely. Yeah, and so like when when couples are wanting to book you. Uh, do they have access to like your availability on like a calendar or are no. you, you answering and like looking through your calendar every time and being like, yeah, yeah. Every, every single time. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so how, how long does that take? Is that just like every day you're sifting through your calendar or is that you got that like system down? Yeah. But you kind of know already. Um, you know what I mean? You, you know, like dates in advance, you know, like, like Saturdays in March. Being <laughs> I, a busy I'm day, so like, bad with organizations. That stuff just stresses me out. <laughs> yeah. Like if you get an inquiry, if I get an inquiry for a Saturday in March, 2021, like already, without seeing that it's a Saturday, I recognize the day of the week. Um, mm. And I'm like, I don't even have to look at my calendar. You're like, oh, it's a Saturday, I'm booked. Yeah. Um, and then and then, and then Friday, <laughs> Friday as you book. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, like, like, yeah, it takes a little bit of time, but it's, um, again, like, if you're not available, like, it's a pretty simple cut and paste email. You know, it's like, hey, I'm not available. Yeah. Um, yeah. Another thing I do, it doesn't, it's a very, very low strike rate. Um, and it might be a little bit, um, I don't even know what the word is. A little bit. It's a little bit of a ballsy thing to do. But even when I'm not available, I have something in there that's just like, um, if there happens to be any flexibility on your date, haha. Um, here's my price guide anyway, and kind of write that. And maybe you know, like one in twenty people might come back, and they're like, you know what? Like all we've booked is the venue. Um, yeah. Well, they haven't even booked anything in yet. That was just a date they're looking at, and they're like, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, it actually is flexible. Like we we can change it. We you know we love your work. So yeah, yeah. That's like it's worth it's worth putting in there. Like you mm-hmm. know if you. You know, if you don't ask, no one can ever say yes. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah what's the worst thing they can you, say? You no, miss 100% so. of the shots you don't take, right? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Like, like every inquiry, like, try and try and make that count. And, um, yeah, even if you're not available, like, be be friendly. And I, I always give them, like, a list of names. Um, you know, the photographers that regularly refer me work back, I'll, I'll always I, – I put their names forward um, when, I'm, when I'm not free for weddings as well. And that kind of um, – yeah, that, that little, you know, referral pool helps, um, helps as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, I, I can't – like maybe it's just because I'm so poor with organization and my wife does all of it for me. Um, but have you, like, I just can't imagine doing 70, 80 weddings a year and not like at least once or twice, like messing the schedule up. Have you ever like double booked or got a day wrong or? No, no, it's R- really I, like, like I hear of lots of people having, having that, but no, no, it hasn't happened. I feel like it's pretty like, I don't know. It's awesome. Yeah. It's pretty like foolproof. Like I have like their wedding in like, 
you know, my Google Calendar. Um, I still, I like, I don't use, I don't use an actual CRM program, you know, like Studio Ninja or Tave or, or mm. all these programs that people use. Um, it's kind of just like a, I guess it's like a Frankenstein kind of, you know, a bunch of stuff that I've kind of programmed and put together over the years. Like it's so, so I'm using Google Doc, like Google Docs, Google Drive, Google Calendar. It's all, it's all very Google-ish. Um, mm-hmm. And, but all that's automated as far as like putting their date into my calendar when they book me, that also creates it. Um, creates the data in my spreadsheet where all my weddings are. That creates in my accounting program. Um, creates like every wedding of mine has a folder in in um, in Google um, in Gmail as well um, that I use. So it's so it's all there. So it's pretty hard to um to actually to actually double double book. Yeah, and, I, and I'm kind of lucky, you know. Like so, some clients are like high touch and ask a lot of questions, but most people are pretty low touch. And I think I can go into social media and stuff more, but I think because I throw so much of myself out there online, you know, like my about mm-hmm. me page is massive. Like my FAQ page is like it's literally like 10,000 words and then people still read it. Yeah. Um, I, I read and, it. It's my favorite part of your website. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You just keep scrolling yeah. and it's like, I, I can't stop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah so people good. do that. People are like, oh, I was like sitting in bed for like two hours last night and read your whole <laughs> FAQ page. And I, and I update it regularly because obviously my, my, my opinion and my ideas of things change and things that yeah. I thought have worked well in the past don't work well anymore. And I, and I update that page. But so people kind of already feel like they know me. Um, and I feel like m- your voice online is also needs to be like your voice is in person. Like, yeah, about me page can't just be like three lines. Like, you know, hi, I'm Michael. I love taking photos because I like people. In you know, book me. You know, like it's it's not interesting. Like, mm-hmm. there's got to be so much why about it. Like, you know, like shit. Like, there's so many wedding photographers creating similar work and doing the same thing. So, what is like setting you apart? Like, what's the why? Like, why should someone book you um, over everyone else? Um, and I, yeah, I feel like, and, and again, I like some of my social media posts are really short. You just talk about the weather or something if you're running low on ideas. <laughs> but often, you know, like I put one up like two days ago, you know, referring to the COVID-19 thing. And it was probably a few paragraphs long and, and asked mm-hmm. about that. Um, yeah. And people connect with that because people, you know, want to read that information. I feel like people kind of know you, um, you know, wouldn't know me a little bit um, before like I rock up and shoot their day. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So um, how, how else are you, are you using social media to like get your voice out there and, and tell people who you are? Because I... I am not really on social media that much these days. Um, are you posting like stories? Are you? Cause I, yeah, I, like I, I post stories a little bit. Like I'm not like um, I'm definitely not like I don't like have like a perfect social media account. As in like I don't I don't use hashtags. Um, I don't I don't look up what the perfect time to post is. You know what I mean? Like yeah. my social media is like as like sporadic as my brain is. So I'm like, oh, I haven't posted something in a couple of days. I'm going to post something, and I just post something. You know, it can be. 10 o'clock in the morning or four in the afternoon, whenever um, I just post it. But I don't like have, I don't have a, I don't have a social media um, strategy as such. I just kind of, I kind of just post. Um, and there's just a few common things I post about. Yeah. It's, it's often like stories about the couple or stories about stories about me or about their day. Um, and just kind of add like a sense of realism um, about it. It's very, very rare that I'll just like put up a post and it's just like couple's name, you know, with a, balloon or something yeah you know, something just exciting you, you gotta make up something right now and yeah. yeah yeah you know because people people want to connect with that like humans want to connect with something human you know what i mean they're mm-hmm. sitting on the couch or on the toilet or in bed or whatever just scrolling through shit mindlessly like we all do it like it's just like human nature to do that now so to be able to have something that like stands out and connects with people on that um on that level is is, is, is super is super important to have mm-hmm. and i feel like all of that like like your social media and your website and your price guide, all of that is like tied into your brand. Like your brand is so much more than just like your logo at the top of your website or your business card. Your brand is, your brand is who you are um, and you need to inject, you know, so much of yourself into that. And yeah, yeah I guess I feel like over the years I've, I've become more comfortable and confident doing that and that's, and that's yeah. enabled me to have a, you know, like, like the best like, you know, obviously everyone thinks their clients are the best clients in the world. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like my couples are the ones that are, that, that, that are paying me and, and, and feeding my family and paying my mortgage but but they're actually awesome like I, I just I have the best day with couples and uh, you know like no one is immune to you know having to deal with a couple of assholes and, and, and you get that every year you know what I mean like of course mm-hmm. everyone gets that like it's running a business but um, for the most part everyone is everyone's awesome um, yeah. They're, yeah they're so good to deal with and I, and I feel like that comes from just me being you know open and, and honest um, online um, mm-hmm. as well yeah, yeah. But you, you also have like a, like a specific flavor of open and honest. It's like, like what, 
like if like me being open and honest, I, I like I try to talk about something in the world that's going on and like try to be like philosophical about it and yeah. end up just like deleting everything and then just post I'd post a like a balloon <laughs> like you mentioned before. Um, yeah. But like you mentioned, like on your um, your about you page and your FAQ on your website, like I it's just so genuine and anybody who reads it like knows who you are. Like I feel like I know who you are just from reading that. And then it just, it matches so well with who you are, um, through our conversations, uh, and then in your work. So like what, like how, how do you express yourself and be honest without like having it to be forced? And like, how, how do you have so much to say? <laughs> yeah. Um, I think, yeah, thank you. I, I, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, <laughs> obviously like anyone who's actually listening to this is like, man, this guy does have a lot to say, man, he rambles on, but like <laughs> I, I, I legitimate, I, I re- I actually really love my job, like like I legitimately do. Like it's the it's the best job I've ever had. I've, I've worked I've worked so many shitty jobs in my life um, mm. that were so much harder than shooting weddings. Um, so I just I legitimately love it. And like I don't want like I don't want this to ever end. Um, I, I just I want to be able to keep doing because I was like. I, I, Man, even if I won Tats Lotto, do you guys call it Tats Lotto? The lottery. Um, if, 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 <laughs> if, even if I won the lottery, like, I, I, don't think, I wouldn't shoot 80 weddings a year. I'd probably, you know, might do five or ten. Um, but, like, I would, I would still do this for a job. Like, I, like, I love it. Um, mm-hmm. And I always have lots to say about it because there's, you know, weddings are so interesting and people are so interesting. Um, mm-hmm. So there's, yeah, I just, I, I feel like, you know, in regards to creating content for your website or your social media, I'm like, if you don't have anything to say about it, like, seek something that you're more passionate about that you do have something to say about <laughs> do, 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 do you know what I, that's not like the having like a go like at anyone but I, that's kind of like yeah. my if i was doing something i didn't really you know like if you know like i've worked sales jobs in the past where you don't really care about the product you're selling and i'm like oh, i mm-hmm. can't really talk about this like much you know because you don't care about it but i'm yeah i, I legitimately do really care about it and i i care about people having an awesome wedding day and i i care about doing an awesome job so i think i probably just have a yeah have a have a lot to say about making yeah. it as awesome as, as I can for, for everyone. Yeah. I guess that's what I'd try to figure out more. It's, it's not like, I, I agree with what you're saying. I think, yeah, if, if you're passionate about it, you obviously will have more to say about it. But at the same time, I like to argue that, I guess a little bit would be um, like myself. I am super passionate about wedding photography. I love it. But like, I just don't have confidence, I guess, in like my words. I'm like, maybe my words aren't, um, it's, I don't know. It's like, it's just hard to formulate something like, worthwhile saying you know yeah it's like it just seems like it comes really easy to you um and you're just like yeah of course like this is so easy <laughs> where i'm like no it's not easy for me but i'm still passionate about it <laughs> yeah no that's man that's fair like yeah well, I mean, yeah there's there's times i'm just like you know like like i do love my job but there's you know there's times where it like is like a job do you know mm-hmm. what i mean like it yeah, yeah it feels like a job and and sometimes it does, you know. Sometimes it does come harder than um, than others. I, I, um, yeah. And then there's times I'm like, oh, I've got nothing to post. And there might, there might be periods of time where it's like two or three weeks, and I kind of don't post anything. Um, you know, like like we're all, we're all we're all human. Like we all go through like ups and downs, um, and and stuff like that. But I don't know. I, I guess probably the biggest secret is just like don't like don't overthink it. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like mm-hmm. what if you just say something that you wanted to say and and, and put it on the internet, like. You know, as, as long as it's not like offending anyone or like it's it's rude or anything, you know, even if it doesn't, you know, you can post polite things that offend people on the internet these days. Like, so yeah. that's probably that's probably a shitty example, but like, yeah, probably just just don't overthink it. Just 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 post, like, just post something you're thinking about and, and do it. What's the worst thing that can happen? Like, it gets five likes, like, big deal. You know what I mean? Like, the yeah, whole yeah. world's not going to crumble if your post doesn't get enough likes. You're like, yeah, you just leave it there on the feed and. Yeah, and, and, and move on, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah. I've, I've done that before. I've done posts where I'm like, man, this is gold. This is like, this is going to go off. Like, this is my next viral post. I can yeah, feel yeah. it. And then, and then like, seven people like it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> probably, probably, probably because I pay no attention of, like, when to post or anything like that. I was like, I was probably posting it at some completely non-off-peak yeah. um, off peak time. But, yeah, don't overthink it. Just just do it. Same as a wedding day. Just just shoot it. Just shoot what's happening in front of you. Don't ever think where you're gonna where you're gonna do everything, and you just you just kind of just, just roll with it. Yeah, that's good advice. I mean, it's like hard advice to follow for a lot, I think, but <laughs> it's great advice to just yeah go for it, do it. What's yeah, the worst that sure. could happen if you just go for it? Yeah, um, yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. One thing I wanted to kind of touch on with you is 
like obviously like a lot of what I'm talking about is based around like the sheer volume of weddings that you do. And for a lot of people, it's just trying to understand like how you do that. Because like I mentioned before, like for a lot of people, like 20 to 30 weddings is like they're capped out, they're stressed out, they can't get it done. Yeah. Um, so like my question out of that is like, how do you have any time for anything but work essentially? Cause you have a, like a young daughter, you're married, like you seem to have really, really good work-life balance. You're taking vacations in the middle of busy season. Yeah. Um, like what's, how, how do you have that? <laughs> Tell me your secrets. Um, <laughs> so obviously like, like vacations and, and, and time um, and time off, like that's – when you work in weddings, that's got to be planned in advance. You've got to plan that really far um, in advance, yeah. Yeah, we just went interstate in January for, um, for for a couple of weeks. And January is like the middle of busy season here. But but I'd already planned that like a year ago because um, I was like, I've never had time off in summer in Australia since I've done this full time. Like I want to have like a summer holiday and go to an Australian beach like normal Australians do. Yeah. Um, so I just – took a few weeks off in January um, and, and planned that um, in advance. Obviously, like, you know, like, touch wood, I always had the, lu- you know, I had the luxury that I'm, that I am busy and I, I can afford um, to do that. You know, I mm-hmm. can take time off um, in busy season. But yeah, I, I mean, like, the, like I work hard. There's no doubt. Like I put in a lot of hours and, and, and I work hard, um, you know, and, and there is times, you know, like in March and November when it is super busy here in Melbourne, like, you know, it, like it does get stressful and you're like, and you do have a lot of work um, mm. on and, you know, you don't really feel like there's a work-life balance. You just feel like it's just like, that's just life. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're, just, you're just doing that. But, um, yeah, I, I, um, yeah, I, I work from home um, at the moment and, um, you know, obviously when I'm not shooting weddings, I, I, yeah, I feel like I get lots of time with, with my wife and, and my daughter and, um, yeah, compared – it, it, yeah, I, I find it so hard to explain without just like – just like – telling people like just harden up you know what i mean but i'm also like we we just we have such good lives as wedding photographers like if you're a wedding photographer and and you have enough weddings that you can pay the bills and pay the mortgage with like your life is awesome like your life is so good like the flexibility we have with with the lifestyle that this gives us like yeah we lose weekends and fridays and saturdays but that's such a small price to pay like you know because when it comes to monday morning and all your friends are waking up and going to a job they hate like you can wake up whenever you want um, like it's it's awesome. We are we are so lucky to be able to do this for a job, um, and, and we get paid well for what we do. Um, yeah, yeah, we work hard, and and obviously there's a lot of there's a high risk with what we do as well. Um, you know what I mean? You've got one shot at, at shooting a wedding, um, mm-hmm. so so naturally that's you know the stress that comes with that is um, is obviously naturally there. But yeah, our life's our life's pretty good. There's there's a lot harder jobs out there than than shooting weddings, and I feel like I just feel like it's my my history of working so many different jobs. You know, like. You know, working on a building site, like if you're like putting up frames or like doing roof trusses, like you gotta lift up these giant heavy things, you know, up, you know, <laughs> up really, really high and you work and then physically that is so hard. Your body is just physically wrecked by the end of the day. And also like doing doing roof trusses is like mathematical as well. Mm-hmm. So then like your brain is tired as well and you're physically tired and you gotta do that on Monday, working on a building site. And then on Tuesday, you wake up at 6 a.m. and you do that all over again. And then on mm. Wednesday, you do it all over again. And then you keep doing it. And, like, most of the world does that. Like, we're work- they're working hard jobs over and over like anyone, you know. Yeah. Australians, like, working in the mines and stuff like that. There's, there's these dudes, like, working 28 days straight for, like, 14 hours a day in, in, in 40 degree heat and they're, they're doing it because that, that, that's their job. And then I'm like, we're just, we're just shooting weddings. Like, we're hanging out with people <laughs> and partying. Like, it's... It's awesome. Like, yeah, it's stressful, but it's like compared to other jobs, our our job is so good. Yeah. Um, and I like, and I just feel like because I've worked so many different jobs, it's just like I, I just never take this for granted. I'm just like, yeah, this is this is awesome. It's yeah. the best. That's good perspective. That's, yeah, I love how positive you are. Oh. Like, you're infectious. <laughs> I, was, I, was telling, I told you this last time we had a phone call. It's like every time I talk to you or like. Have, like finish a conversation with you i'm always like okay i'm gonna go book 70 weddings this year <laughs> let's do it <laughs> like, do it man what do we gotta do do it yeah <laughs> do that yeah it could, it could be it could be a lot harder and a, a lot worse but you know i i, also, I, I guess i gotta kind of like backtrack a bit on that as well like mm-hmm. I, I also understand that like um obviously i'm an outgoing personality and naturally i'm extroverted and i know that there is a lot of people who are introverted and shooting weddings so you know talking to other photographers like I also completely acknowledge that if you're an introverted person and then you have to go to work for eight or ten hours and remember people's names and pump people up and like mm-hmm. become an extroverted person for eight, ten hours, like 
that is mentally very, very exhausting. Like, yeah. like I completely acknowledge that as well. Um, you know, and I also acknowledge, you know, I'm, you know, touch wood, like, um, like my, my body is fit and, and well. I don't have any like niggling injuries or any back mm. problems or neck problems or anything like that. So same deal as well. Like, you know, but th- that also goes for any job. But, you know, if you're a wedding photographer and you do have like, you know, you have a back injury or a neck injury, like I also completely acknowledge it's, it's not that feasible to shoot three weddings in a row because cause your yeah. body is actually your, – your body physically can't do it. So like mm. I mean, that's, you know, like I just feel like, yeah, if you're in a position where like mentally it's you can cope and it's fine and, and physically you can do it and like it, it would be daft of you not to do it. Because yeah. cause there's like an end – there's like an end game to this as well as in like I'm not – I'm like I'm very presently aware that like I'm not able to do it forever. Um, there's going to be a time when I'm not going to be able to book that many weddings um, a year. Yeah. Um, so you're just seizing your yeah. moment, just like yeah, yeah. Th- there's season, a number. Of, there's a spot on. Yeah. There's a number of reasons why I like I'm not going to be able to book that many weddings um, a, a year. Like in you know when whenever that time comes. But um, yeah. So I'm like if if I can do it now, let's just yeah, let's just do it. Yeah. yeah. Do you, do you see yourself doing weddings for a long period of time or what's that like future look like for you? Yeah. I, I mean, I'd, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd love to be able to, I want to do it for as long, um, as long as possible. Um, but yeah, th- there's definitely a lifespan to the job. Um, like, yeah, again, like, like physically, if, if, if something happens, it obviously becomes more difficult, but, um, this, this is this is this is not like a right or wrong answer this is just like an insight into how my crazy brain works but I feel like there's gonna be like a point you know at the moment I'm nearly 37 years old um, and most of the couples I shoot are between the age of 25 and 35 that's kind of like your average getting married demographic yeah you know, if, you, if you're just generalizing people so like when I rock up to groom prep like that's the first part I get to in the morning um, you get to groom prep and you rock up and you're like, hey, Briggsy. And I'm like, want a beer? And I'm like, I'm one of the boys. I'm one of them. You can yeah. hang out with them. But I'm like, how long is it going to be until I'm the weird old guy with the camera? You <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? And like people are like, we don't, who's, who's that guy in the corner? Yeah. Like, the conversation is going to flip. You're going to be the one, hey, I'm Briggsby or Briggsy, give me a beer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Who's this guy? <laughs> yeah, yeah. People are like, who's, who's, who's this? So trying to, want, trying to relive know, the glory days. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Back in... Back in back in uh, yeah back in 2020 um, yeah things are good yeah <laughs> um, but yeah yeah so th- there's kind of there's kind of that you know and then when I'm hanging out with the bridal party you know during portraits like I'm one of them I can hang out with one of them and connect with them I'm not saying you know you can be 45 and 50 and connect with 35 and 30 year olds like absolutely mm-hmm. I think it's that that comes down to your personality but that's also like that's just my brain just like freaking the hell out going like who's <laughs> who's gonna who's gonna want to book me um when I'm when I'm old and, and boring so I'm just you kind of worry about worry about that. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'd like yeah. to be able to do it um, for for as long, for, as, for as long as I can. I don't want to. <laughs> this is what this is what's like freaked me out. Like with the, you know, sorry to go back to the the negative talk, the, the c word with the virus. Mm-hmm. Um, like for the first time in five years, I've like thought, shit, am I gonna have to get a real job? Like, am I actually gonna have to go and like do some actual work to, <laughs> you know, to, to to pay my mortgage so like over winter now? Work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> now that now that weddings have stopped, so, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this it, this has never felt like a real job for me. I just mm. yeah, like yeah, I, I, yeah. I work hard, but it's it, it's a pretty it's a pretty sweet gig, man. It's a yeah. it's a good job. Yeah. So like, what's your like skincare routine like now? We gotta start working on that. We have to go for a jog every now and then. Yeah, I know. Yeah, like salt salt bath or whatever Epsom salt. Yeah, get it all keep keep looking young. Keep keep yeah. being keep being fit. We'll we'll see. <laughs> yeah. I heard sunscreen. You just put sunscreen on your face every day and you'll be good for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. So, Does that work? Does it? I, I don't know. Apparently. <laughs> Maybe, uh. I like it's, it hasn't been sunny here in six months, so I can't really. Yeah. Like, you're just coming out. out of winter, aren't you? Yeah, we are. Yeah. Yeah. So you would, you would know more cause you guys are in the sun all the time. So yeah. Yeah. We get some brutally hot wedding days here. Um, like, like, like like really hot and yeah Mel- yeah Melbourne temperature is funny in Melbourne yeah but we yeah it's not unusual to get days over um over forty degrees um mm. here um in in summer like in January February you know I think yeah the hottest uh, actually no December I did one like a few days before Christmas and it was like one of the hottest days in Melbourne on record I think it was forty six degrees Jeez. um the wedding day um yeah. that, that that's that's Celsius uh, as well just like melting. um yeah and that yeah that was just so hot which that is what like just, uh like one ten one fifteen Fahrenheit. I think 120 maybe. Yeah, 
mate. Yeah, <laughs> you, you, you would probably be better than that than being being close. I'm gonna to say one ten. Like, I'm gonna say one ten. Yeah. Why are they the only country in the world who doesn't have Celsius and ah, and, yes. and kilometers and yeah. Uh, I don't know. Um, yeah, yeah, but yeah, that was it. Was just brutally hot and yeah. We kind of we kind of you just got to push. You just got to push through. But you got to you feel sorry for the couple like on a day like that. Oh like, uh, yeah, can imagine get married when it's when it's forty five. Guy degrees. in like the three piece suit, like if it's a I wool know. suit too, just like dripping. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. I totally should have brought a spare shirt to that wedding. I was just, I was literally just drenched with, with sweat. Um, in that <laughs> one, you work hard on those days. Those oh, days, yeah. those days are actually hard work. Yeah, yeah. But then you get to finish it off with like a, a drink on the dance floor, and it's nice. Yeah, though. absolutely, always, Not always. All that bad. So yeah, like, yeah. Um, being here in Vancouver, where it's like rainy, pretty much ten months of the year, um, it's a little bit of an exaggeration, but it feels like it's not. Um, whenever I think about Australia and like Mel- Melbourne, Melbourne, Mel- well played. Well and, played. uh, I just like in, in my mind, maybe it's cause I'm here. It's like, that's the place to be for weddings. Like the weather's great. It's like beautiful. It's always sunny. Uh, what are some like real life challenges that you guys have there? Cause I have no idea. Yeah. Um, good. Yeah. Man. Like, yeah. I, I, most Australians as well, like where, very um we're very aware that we live in an awesome country um yeah as far as like you know our economy and the weather and just the landscape and everything like that um yeah i don't know probably the biggest challenge is just like crazy heat um and and like ceremonies early in the day you know what i mean like you know i'm shooting a lot of like wineries and farms and properties like out this way because we've got a pretty wide open space and yeah like you know you got a 3 p.m ceremony in the middle of summer yeah. Um, you know, when the sun sets not until like eight thirty, nine o'clock, you're just like shooting in the middle of the day with, with shadows and everything like that. But that, that's always just like it is what it is. I've kind of just learned with weddings. Like I think it used to stress me out like when, you know, the weather was shit or like light's not perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not our job to like make it perfect. Like you can't change that. So you just kind of – you've got to make the best of the situation um, – of the situation yeah. that you're given um, for, for that, yeah. Yeah. That was probably pretty – Pretty, pretty I would fancy, I sorry. would die in forty degree heat. It's like twenty five degrees here in the summer most summer days, and I'm like sweating, dripping, just like yeah. Uh, is, is that as hot as it gets? Is that it? No, it it gets up to like the in, into the thirties sometimes. Like a really yeah. really hot day would be like mid thirties, but yeah. that's like pretty rare. But we also have like it's pretty like it's medium humidity, so it's warm and it's humid. Whereas I'm imagining it's pretty dry there. Or it could be wrong. Um, yeah, we we have really really dry. Yeah, our, our, the humidity is dry. Yeah, it's it's very dry. Um, and yeah, mm. we didn't get a lot of rain. Um, you know, most of the world would have seen we had some some, some pretty pretty devastating bushfires. Um, oh yeah, over, over summer throughout heard, heard throughout a lot those. of the, oh, yeah. yeah throughout a lot of the country um, as well. That didn't affect my area um, directly, but yeah, there's definitely some um, venues in New South Wales that um, didn't survive the fires, and obviously that that af- that affected uh, weddings. Yeah, brutal. so it's been a yeah. Yeah, combine yeah, combine with the fires and and now um yeah and and, and now Corona's hit like it's yeah, it's yeah hit. Geez, Australia's just had it's had a rough year. Yeah, rough, yeah, rough absolutely. Year. Yeah, it's been it's been hard. I imagine there's you know people who've already had to postpone their wedding like more than once like prior um, prior mm-hmm. to the virus because because of bushfires um yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, we didn't get a lot of rain, but um, it'll uh, it'll we'll come, we'll come good. We're a resilient bunch. <laughs> You started out. Well, you guys started out as what, like prisoners, shipped off to Australia. Is that what it was? <laughs> yeah, I think, I, I think so. Yeah, I should. I probably should know about more about Australian history. I, I, I feel like I mean Canadians might be different, but in America they're so proud and they know so much about their history. And mm-hmm. yeah, we don't. Um, yeah, we're, we're not. We're not very proud of our history, generally. Generally <laughs> speaking, um, yeah. because of the yeah the way it happened and the way we took the land off um, our indigenous people and, and stuff like that. Most. You know, mm-hmm. most most Australians who who look like I do are, are not overly proud of our um, anime history. That that's kind of as much detail as I know about that that political that political yeah, yeah, side yeah. of it. Canada's yeah, uh, probably not as much shame, but there's definitely a lot of like talks about reconciliation and a lot of acknowledging that oh, we kind of messed up this whole yeah yeah absolutely whole thing for you guys. I think uh, yeah. be, being Canadian, we learn about just like the the ink the british and like the, the colonies so i think that's like we know like random facts about every like colony so i know yeah, like okay. australia has this thing like i, I can't even think of any other colonies right now yeah. <laughs> that's right <laughs> south africa was one or something yeah all good uh, man i'm just gonna stop oh. talking about that 
Yeah. Um, <laughs> a jet. A jet. Yeah. <laughs> it's good idea. What's next? Uh, uh, I did have one question that uh, we've been asking everybody, and that is kind of just like a fun question. Do you do you have any like horror stories from any of your weddings? I mean, you have a pretty big sample size, um, shooting 70, 80 weddings a year. Do you have any like crazy stories from one of your weddings, like one of your couples um, of brides that you, you're able to yeah, share? There's, there's, there's a few. I mean, yeah, I, I had an all-in brawl at a wedding um, about a year ago. Like um, you, you like, did. Like a, yeah, I mean, I wasn't involved. I was just, <laughs> I was having my, I was having my dinner at the time. But yeah, like a big <laughs> fight um, broke out um, at the wedding between guests and the, and the couple were involved. That was like that was that was mind blowing. I've never seen anything wow. like that. But yeah, probably a story to go into a little bit more detail. Basically, I, I did a wedding um, about about I think it was three years now because I just reposted the picture on my Instagram. But the groom. Um, woke up on the wedding day just so sick. Like like it was like gastro type sick. You know, like when you're that mm-hmm. sick, like you can't stop liquid coming out either end. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. like you, you you have a glass of water and it either comes yeah, out. Yeah, you don't have to elaborate. Yeah, like we it's get just it. the worst. Yeah, yeah we get um, it. That, that was him. He just, so your body just can't hydrate itself. So you get mm. no energy on the day. He was so sick. Um, and um, yeah, like we we kind of delayed the ceremony and like just got through the ceremony so they could get married. And like as soon as the ceremony was done, you have to like, you know, Go go backstage, um, again. You know to 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 be to be sick and yeah. But basically, the poor the poor dude. He, he was he, he was that like he was that dehydrated and and that kind of you know malnourished, not being able to even take in water. He he ended up going to hospital on his wedding night, um, <laughs> and had to get put on an IV drip so he could try and re- rehydrate his body so yeah. he could at least come back for like the last hour or two of the reception Jeez. and hear some speeches. But oh, it's yeah, the party. Kept on going. <laughs> he's, oh, he's in the hospital. Hardly a party, but yeah, I felt so sorry. You know, like the bride was, you know, sitting on her own on the bridal table. You know, like with the chair next to her. It was just, yeah. it was just such a strange vibe at the wedding. You mm. know, everyone was trying to keep positive and upbeat. But you know, the silver lining to that story, they they got married um out here in the Yarra Valley in an awesome venue. Um, and the venue owners and the staff, were like guys, we're we're doing this again for you. Um, and like everyone, so everyone came back off their own bat. Like you know, myself, the video guy, the venue chef, mm-hmm. florist, makeup artist. Everyone came back, and like the week later, you know, because it wasn't you know gastro is not like a long term thing. It just lasts mm-hmm. for a couple of days, and just the poor dude it happened to happen on his wedding day. Um, we um, yeah, we that was on the Saturday, and then we I think it was on the following Sunday we got back together at the venue. Um, obviously not all the guests, just yeah. you know their their immediate family. There was maybe 10, 12 people came back and. Yeah, we had had you know because he didn't even get to eat any food on his wedding day. Yeah. So yeah, they recooked all their wedding food for him. Cool. Um, we so we got to do their couple portraits, which he never did on the wedding day. Um, mm. Yeah, and, and it turned out really well. And like that second you know wedding night that we had was like still like one of the most memorable nights um, you know of my career because like everyone everyone's emotions were just so heightened and like so mm. thankful. Um, you know, the couple and all the all their family and guests were so thankful that all our suppliers just, you know, came back off our own bats and, and did it for them. And I was like, you know, like that was like the least we could do for the poor dude. Like Yeah. Yeah. Kidding. You know, so that was like a shitty story, you know, turned, you know, turned really good story. But that's like that kind that. of stands out for me. You know, yeah, because yeah, your bride's like freaking out about the wrong shade of white in their bouquets and stuff <laughs> like that on their wedding day. And I was like, whoa, like, like cool your jets. Like, he could have been this guy. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. like that, that, was a, that was a bad day for him. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, the, the wrong roses in your bouquet. Like, we're, 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 yeah. we're still going to have a good day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Perspective, right? It's all about perspective. Yeah, always. Ab- absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, that's cool. Um, and speaking of like vendors and stuff, I noticed that you guys have, um, by you guys, I mean, you have like a vendor list on your website. Um, are you pretty close with like a bunch of people that you work with and like, what's that like building a list like that? Like, are you friends with all these people or are you just working with them lots? Um, no, I would, I would say I'm friends with, with most of them. Um, yeah, a lot of them, I just know that, you know, they're going to do a good job. So if the couple book them all, they're going to have an awesome day. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, a lot of them I'm quite close with, you know, because I, I guess to a certain extent there's a little bit of a food chain with with um with weddings and obviously venues are at the top of the food chain because you can't get married without a wedding venue. You kind of can, um, but you know they're naturally at the top. So, um, you know, if there's one thing I've learned, you know, over the years of shooting weddings is like don't piss the venue off. Mm-hmm. Um, like just do whatever they do whatever they want, even even if even if they're you know, not great people, just just do what they say and especially don't annoy the chef. Um, I learned that early on in my career, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like take too long for photos and, you know, the chef's trying to get out like 80 pieces of chicken and, and you've yeah. just taken like half an hour long. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah, I like made that mistake earlier. I was like, never again. Yeah, don't annoy the chef. Um, it was yeah, so my food. Could, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, it's this sure. weird clear liquid in my feet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, um, but yeah, probably, and you know, and then celebrants and photographers are pretty similar on the food chain, you know what I mean? So after people book a venue, um, you know, you need to get married, so they book a celebrant. So celebrants are often higher up than photographers. Um, so having a good relationship with celebrants is, is it's super important um, as, as, as well because um, they can refer work to you as the photographer. Yeah. yeah. And then obviously video guys, you know, there's people who you want to be working with who are shooting a similar style to you um, and you can refer yeah. back work to each other. But, yeah, that list chops and changes a little bit. But, um, yeah, for the, for the most part it's, it, it stays pretty similar. Yeah. Yeah. And you find you, you work with most of those people most of your weddings or does that kind of just rotate uh, out? Try, yeah, you try to. Like obviously that's preferred, you know, especially with video. Um, it's preferred that it's someone that you know um, and trust oh, yeah. and, and, and work with. Bad video team um, is the worst. Oh yeah, like, oh, man. like that, that that's a whole like, yeah. <laughs> that's a whole podcast on itself. Um, <laughs> as, 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 as photo and video working together. Yeah. yeah, we won't even won't even won't even go <laughs> delve into that. Yeah. There's times it's amazing, um, and then there's times it's not so good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I mean just to like go into that briefly, I love working with great videographers because I feel like it like challenges me further because I know what their work looks like. And you know, sometimes you see the back of their screen and what they're creating on the day. Mm-hmm. And you're like, man, that is so good. And like, I've really got to step up my game because I know yeah. how good this couple's wedding film is going to be, and it like makes me like work even better mm. um, on a wedding day. That's like, that's a that's a pos- that's a positive. Spin what, what does that look like though? Videographer thing. Working better on the wedding day. You're just going faster, like <laughs> more <laughs> yeah, energy. Just, like, <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be louder. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna really amp this up. I don't know. I think you just I think trying to be more creative, yeah, um, more angles more than anything. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, spot up, man. yeah, just, yeah, hit the ground, okay. yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah, trying to, trying to be more creative, yeah, but definitely, definitely makes you work better, um, hmm. with that, yeah, yeah, jokes aside, I agree 100%. Seeing yeah, like, absolutely, like, like, like yeah. a professional video team that's just like nailing it. Oh, you're just like, yeah. okay, yeah, I see that angle, it's like, I'm gonna take that later, not right now, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, spot on, coming, yeah, coming back should, to that, yeah, it should kind of be like a dance you know but particularly during like the couple portraits you know where like yeah. you know you naturally um you know on average venues out here you kind of have between 20 and 40 minutes after the ceremony to do those couple portraits if it's all on site at the same venue which to me that's like more than enough time yeah. um to do that but that time is when you really are gelling with the videographer because you're both communicating and and that's a kind of that's the part of the day that you're controlling you know what i mean there's a lot mm-hmm. of parts of a wedding day you can't control like the ceremony and the speeches and shit like that you're just going to shoot what's happening in front of you mm-hmm. um but during the couple portraits yeah there's a video guy there um you know or video girl I, I, um you, you can um yeah, it should be like a dance, you know what I mean? So you should both – because, like, I want to create something awesome for the couple and they want to create something awesome for the couple as well. Yeah. And so you've got to kind of, like, gel together um, to be able to do that. And it should be, like, pretty seamless where you're literally, you know, like not standing on each other's feet like during a dance um, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Which yeah. unfortunately happens sometimes, but – Oh yeah, it does. I mean, yeah, I mean, like naturally, like everyone's everyone's like vying for the same awesome shot. Like, like, yeah. like it's gonna happen. But yeah, yeah. There's so many moments where I'm like, I just have to remember, like, they're trying to also get the best shots. For yeah, the that's couple. exactly right. I'm here to get for the couple. It's just like okay. Yeah, it's pride on, aside, yeah. let's just like let's make it great. Yeah, and I think you know anyone on the wedding day, like you know, down to the DJ or band or, or celebrant, anyway, like we're all working for the couple. Like it's the couple that's paying us, and like everyone just wants to create something awesome for the couple like mm-hmm. that that's the, like if you're going into a wedding and you want anything less than that couple to like have the best bloody day of their lives like you're doing it for the wrong reasons you know what i mean like you've mm-hmm. got to make sure that like that, that's your number one priority is that like the couple are having an awesome day that far exceeds how important your photography is on the day like their experience i, I think i was talking about that earlier their experience mm-hmm. on the day is so much more important than yeah. the photos that they're going to receive um and I feel like maybe sometimes with photographers and videographers as well, sometimes we sometimes it's easy to forget that you like because mm-hmm. you're wanting to control the day. And you know, I, I'm human as well. Sometimes I forget that because I'm like, because I know I'm knowing in my head like what I want to shoot, and I'm like, oh, I know what this could be like. Um, and sometimes you probably do. Sometimes might even step in more than you should. And then you know, I've, I've always got to try and remind myself, um, you know, like oh, to step back and just like let this happen and let the couple mm-hmm. have an awesome experience yeah because that is so much more important than than the photos yeah that's awesome yeah those are really good words good wisdom mm. thanks man um Pre- appreciate I, it i i think that we've been going for a long time we we're probably at, have we're at our hour 20 so oh are we 
Yeah. I feel like, uh, yeah, um, we could probably end it there. That's a great way to end. Couples are always number one. Yeah, absolutely. If you, if you have 80 yeah. or if you have 10. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. Spot on, well, man. I agree. Yeah. I didn't realize we were talking for that long. Sorry, I probably should have looked at that. People are like, if they're looking in their podcast, <laughs> they're like, oh, man. They, no. they want to play it. Yeah. Oh, this episode's way too long. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm not listening to that, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll just post some, like, really clickbaity title, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Guarantee 100,000 weddings per year. Yeah. Make, make $2 million <laughs> this year, weddings. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. With lots of... um. Yeah, and we'll put like things. If we're putting out the video, we can like put things below, like click here, click here if you want <laughs> yeah. to, you know what I mean? Like, I'll do like a face, like, oh. <laughs> like a yeah, surprise yeah, face. Yeah. You said what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, spot on, man. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Well, um, well, awesome. Well, yeah, thank you so much for having me. Um, yeah, I, I really appreciate it. And yeah, to anyone that listens, thanks for listening to my um, to my rambling um, as well. So, sorry about that. Yeah, no, I, but, I'm sure yeah, they appreciate, I appreciate it. it. Um, I know I appreciate it. Um, for anybody listening, um, where can they find you on like your website? on social media so that they can take a look and kind of check you out? Uh, yeah, my website's just michaelbriggs.com.au. Um, my Instagram's at Michael Briggs Photography. I think if you're in Australia, if you just Google Briggsy, I come up um, number mm-hmm. one. That's probably not the case if you're in another country though. But yeah, um, that's 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 it. Awesome. Well, thank that's you it. so much for, for, for doing this. Um, right. no, cheers, Miles. Thanks so much for having me, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah, and I hope you guys enjoy this episode and we'll talk to you next time. Thank you. If you want to check out Michael's wedding work, his website and Instagram are in the show notes for you to check out. I always feel like I am not doing enough as a wedding photographer after chatting with Michael, but in a really positive, optimistic way. And I hope you feel that way too as you think about what you can do to take on more weddings after hearing our conversation. On our next episode, we have Jane Farrell from Jane in the Woods, and you don't want to miss how she built a wedding collective that allows her and her team zero stress and total control over their client's wedding day. If you made it this far, thank you so much for listening. If you found this conversation interesting, let us know by sending us a DM on Instagram at postpartner or send us an email to hello at postpartner.com. We look forward to sharing more of our conversations in the next few weeks. Thanks again, and we'll see you on the next episode. See you later.